Hello, it's Sherry from Tranquility Soul Spa. Love in your feet. Hello. So, this week, we're kind of mellowing out a little bit in here. I'm kind of poking the bear a little bit, but not too bad. Um, and I'm not teaching you anything in particular, but that's okay. Because I feel like I have spent a really long time teaching you guys a very lot of things and not knowing if you're getting anything from it or not means that I'm kind of feeling like I need to take a little bit of a break from that and just kind of go in a different direction. So here we are in a new direction having some fun. So feel free post your own memes, quotes, anything like that. We're just kind of kind of have fun for a little while with it. So having said all that, I am still going to do some education stuff. It's just going to be a little less. And one thing that I really want to talk to you guys about today is why I became fascinated with past life regression. How I went from a normal 11 year old, let's go that, to <laughs> a 40 something woman who's saying, damn girl, let's, let's do this. Um, but today I want to talk to you specifically about my very first ever past life regression experience. And it's not a story that I tell a lot. In fact, this is, I think, the very first time that I've ever actually spoken these words to a camera. Um, I have told various people about this story in the past. Um, usually I don't include the deer that I ran over at the end, but I made it. I might this time. We'll see. Um, <laughs> yeah. So when I was 21, I had had kind of an awful childhood, as a lot of you know. Um, I had a series of losery, cheating boyfriends. Um, borderline abusive, definitely mentally abusive and cruel. Um, I'd been bullied in school. I'd had a lot of crap happen in my life, just an absolute ton of crap. And I knew that I needed to change. And some of my friends were much more spiritual than I ever was. I am now probably more spiritual than they are. Well, maybe not. Um, they've kind of been Okay. Anyways, not a competition. We are now all much more spiritual than we once were. And I am much more spiritual, much more spiritual than I was. Um, so my friend had um, this, this hot lead on a past life regression therapist who was only in town for the one day and could fit us both in. So I said yes, because what did I have to lose, right? It was just for fun, and this life really sucked, so maybe it could get better. At least that was what I told her. <laughs> um, the reality of why I agreed to do it is I was stumped. Um, my, my life was such a mess, and it had been such a mess for so many years, um, you know, I, I spent every every five years, every ten years, thinking, okay, the next the next year, the next five years, the next ten years, they got to be better than the last ones because those ones sucked. And I was constantly looking for the magic bullet that was going to fix my life. And the thing that was going to change my future so that I could change my patterns, because my patterns really sucked. I mean, it didn't seem to matter what I did. And 
I was putting a lot of pressure on myself with this with the moment. I was like, this is going to change everything. It's going to be so exciting. And yet I was really scared that it wasn't going to work too. And I was scared that if it did work, how was I ever going to manage the shit that, that, un, that I uncovered by going there and doing this past life regression? Um, and really any real work at that point, I was terrified of it. I was, I was not comfortable where I was, but I wasn't uncomfortable enough to change. Uh, if you're there, raise your hand because um, there's a lot of us that get stuck in that spot where you're uncomfortable. You kind of hate your life, but are you uncomfortable enough to really change it? You know what I mean? Or are you just uncomfortable enough to bitch about it and not actually do anything? So I wasn't sure which of those two I was. Um, and I really wasn't convinced that it was the best way forward at that point. I was willing to try it, but I wasn't sure. I had a lot of issues back then. I mean, I still have some issues, but I had a lot of issues back then. Um, and so I was really worried because it was just the one session. He was from Vancouver or something like that, and he was only in town for the one day. How would I deal with things if they did come up? Like, okay, so say what we talk about is um, my fear of needles, my deathly fear of needles. Like, I will hurt people, fear of needles. How do I manage that if what comes up for me actually makes it worse? Um. Because that's, that's always a consideration, right? Um, so we get to this session. You know, I've got all these thoughts floating around in my head, and I'm worried, and I'm going crazy. And so we get to the session. And my friend goes in first, and she has this amazing experience, and she goes back to, um, she's a caveman, and she's, our cave woman and she's this cave woman with this other um uh her cousin who's also a friend of ours and they are you know doing things or whatever i don't even remember what their relationship was but they were still together in this other life and it was really cool for her she was really enthusiastic about it and then it was my turn so <laughs> i go in and for some reason he had two or three assistants that came in with him to to channel some of this stuff and so there's like and they they put me on this bed in this in this cabin in this beautiful house that we're in and they're crowded around the bed and then they turn the lights out and i'm sitting there in the dark thinking what the fuck? Um, okay, yeah, I'm sitting in the dark with all of these complete strangers that I've spent approximately 45 seconds talking to, and they're standing above me kind of like, I was not in any kind of emotional place to be having this kind of experience in this moment. But I'm a trooper, so, you know, I they're, they're, and he's trying to hypnotize me, and it's not working, and there's yada, 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 and the other, the other people are yipping away, and I'm like, oh, my God, I just can't. I just, bleh. it didn't work. I couldn't be hypnotized. And it was funny because my dad had said um, that he couldn't be hypnotized, too. So I'm like, oh, it's just me, some family thing or whatever. Um, but... Here was the thing, as we were coming out, as we were leaving, I still had to pay him, by the way. <laughs> that is not something that I would do, but I still had to pay him. Um, and it wasn't cheap, like, this was back in like, dating myself here, it was around 1990-ish. Um, and it was like 60 bucks, I mean, that was like, at $5 an hour or $6 an hour, my salary, that was like a day and a half of work that I had to do to make the money to pay for this guy and it, for him not to be able to do anything for me. Oh, I was kind of mad about it. And I was, I was jealous. I was jealous of my friend T who 
had amazing success with this. She didn't really get anything from it other than just this cool experience, but she got it. Like she had that cool experience and I had nothing. And here I was hoping to actually have a, an experience experience. I was hoping that this was going to be life changing. And it really was not, except for, I mean, it was in some ways life changing because I learned that at that point, it took me a lot to be hypnotized. At that point, I was really uncomfortable with big crowds of people standing over top of me while I'm trying to relax on a bed. Um, I was really uncomfortable with all of that happening in the dark. And I feel like in some ways, all of that fear that I had had, all of that being scared of, will it work? Will it won't work? Um, you know, what do I do with it if it does work? All of those fears kept me stuck. They kept me not experiencing it fully. They kept me from actually going through with what I wanted to go through with. Raise your hand if that is you. I, I'm telling you, this was um, this was kind of a watershed moment for me. Because this was the moment that changed everything. When I found myself unable to be hypnotized, when I found myself forking over $60, I don't even know what that would be equivalent to, like $150, bucks, $200, then around there. I'm, I'm forking over the money to this guy. And I'm not getting anywhere. I'm not doing anything with it. I'm just having a pretty shitty experience. That was the moment when I realized that if I wanted anything to change, I needed to be the change. This was the moment that I actually started to take my life back. This moment right here that I'm describing. And, you know, we're sitting there afterwards and we're, you know, we, we didn't even stay in the thing and chit chat, but we're sitting afterwards in the car chit chatting and she's like over the moon. She's so excited and blah, blah, blah. And I'm thinking like, fuck, I wasted 60 bucks. That's like two and a half weeks groceries for me. Cool. I'm so excited. <sighs> It was frustrating. It was really frustrating. Um, and it really gave me the kick in the ass that I needed to really start to get serious about changing my outlook, changing my trajectory in life, figuring shit out at that point. I was really, I mean, I'd done some weird shit in my past. I The last week's video was about timeline jumping which I've done since I was like 14. Um, but this was the moment that really crystallized for me that if I want to change, I have to be the catalyst for that change. I have to be the one who wants it more than I'm afraid of it. I have to be the one who, no matter how afraid of it I am, I need to make it happen that was my that was my my goal and here's the thing this actually was the impetus for me to not fail again because i was scared to death to fail again i was more scared of failing again than i was of the whole weird ass in the dark with these three strange people thing. I really was. And I want you to get to that point. I want you to get to that point where you're thinking, I need to figure this the fuck out. I need that more than I need to hang on to my fear. I need that more than I need breathing, than I need air. Then I need water. I need to know. I need to fix it. I need answers. 
that was the moment for me that I needed answers. And, you know, I've spent a lot of years since then finding answers, losing them, finding them, losing them. But I now know how to find them and keep finding them. How to not just give up. Because giving up is kind of bullshit. It really is. Giving up is letting the fear win. And I refuse to let the fear win ever again. That moment in that dark room with all those weird strangers standing over top of me was the moment that I said, I will not ever again let the fear rule me. That disappointment of knowing that I wasn't going to figure out my fear of needles in that session, it was devastating. And yet, it was catalyzing. It, and I know that's a big word that's kind of scary. But it, it was the kick in the ass that I needed to really create something different in my life. I consider that to be one of the defining moments in my life. And I don't share this story very often. So I'm glad you guys bared with me while I told it because it really changed my life. And here's the thing. When I went back and I haven't, I haven't done a lot of playing with past life, but when I've gone back and done other things, other hypnosis, other past life, other present life, whatever. Every time that I do it now, I find another piece of my confidence. I find another piece of my comfort. I find another piece of that safe feeling that I've been looking for my whole life. I find another piece of my security. I find another piece of my true inner peace. And I find a piece of joy. And all of those things, all of those things that I have gained from these experiences, I can trace back to that one moment. And in that one moment where I said, I am more scared to fail again than I ever will be to do this again. In that moment, I took back my life. I took back control over my life. I took back all of the things that I wanted and deserved in my life. Did I still make mistakes? Yeah, I'm human. Do I still make mistakes? Yeah, I'm fucking human. But I know in my soul now that peace, that confidence, that security, that joy that will never be taken away from me. And that allows me to face my life, to face every day, no matter what's going on, with grace, with humor, with joy. And to really make a difference, both in my life and in other people's lives. And it's funny, you know, because I did... Um, a healing session yesterday with a lady. Um, she's in this group actually, um, and she does healing. So we did, um, we we're doing kind of a bit of a trade thing. So she did a healing for me and I did a healing for her. And she channels when she's healing. And so her channeling, the, the, the spirit that she works with was like, girl, you got it going on. Why are you holding back? Why are you not stepping into your power? What the fuck? And I'm like, yes, sir. I promise to do better, sir. So here I am trying to do better. Um, because we're never, we're only ever on the journey. The only time you're ever going to be done the journey is when you're dead. And then you can start all over again hopefully with some of the tools that you've created in this life. And some of the tools that I've created in this life have been activated or amplified, expanded upon by using past life regression therapy. 
And it is such a powerful tool. I watch it work for myself. I watch it work for other people. And the more I watch it, the more I think like, wow, wow, I can't believe that I get to do this for a living. I can't believe that part of my job in this world is to help other people to access this for themselves, to create something better for themselves. I really do find myself absolutely loving my life now. And I could not have said that even a couple of years ago. I really couldn't have. When I first started my coaching practice, there were days when I still didn't like my life very much. There were days when I was like, even when I was facing it with grace and humor. But now, even the days when I don't do anything but maybe lay on the couch and watch TV because I really don't feel very good, even on those days, I now have a deep inner well of self-satisfaction, of... certitude I, I, there's a word that I'm in missing there's a deep inner well of me basically that I am able to pull from and to fill up and it never empties and that is truly absolutely a blessing for me so I hope you guys have enjoyed my rambles today and I hope that you are be inspired to take some action in your life as well that maybe you're thinking you know this could be the thing this could be the kick in the ass that I need this could be the inspiration that I need um, and I hope that you take action from it that you say you know what I want that too um, just like in Harry when Harry met Sally and uh, you know well, Meg Ryan's there having an orgasm. <laughs> and the old broad goes, I'll have what she's having. I want you guys to have that too. Because it really does feel like kind of having an orgasm all the time. But a, a life orgasm, if that makes sense. So on that note, now that I've grossed you all out with the idea of life orgasms, wherever you are in this big, beautiful, amazing world, have a fabulous day. Enjoy yourself. Seize the moment and take care. Bye. How do we do this? <laughs>